The year was 1303 BCE, give or take. It was late August or September. The season of flood, Arket, was beginning. And in the southern city, Waset, a new pharaoh was appearing in splendor. The new pharaoh was named Suti, or Seti. Seti's coronation ceremony is not recorded in specific detail. We have some images that reference the idea, but we don't have any specific text about it. We don't have the date, or even the exact location. If I had to guess, I would say Seti probably celebrated his coronation soon after his father's burial, and he possibly did so in the city of Waset, or Thebes. Why do I think that specifically? Well, one of Seti's royal names includes the phrase Ha M Waset. This translates as one who appears in Thebes. It's a generic phrase, many kings used it, but if you put that together with the timing of Seti's visit, it seems like a reasonable possibility that Seti would use this occasion to receive his crowns and celebrate his pageantry. As I said, we don't have specific images of Seti I's coronation, but we do have artistic imagery that references the topic. On the walls of Karnak Temple, Seti commissioned scenes that showed him coming before the gods to receive their blessings and even receive his crowns. In one image, we see Seti I standing beneath a stream of water. Water, in the shape of Ankh symbols, pours over his head, falling on either side of his body. The water is being poured out of jugs by two gods. In this case, the gods are Horus and Seth. Horus and Seth are the classic symbols of Egyptian kingship. Horus, the eternal king himself, protects the ruler in his everlasting incarnation. Seth is slightly more complicated, but he also gives the pharaoh strength and power, especially power to defeat his enemies. The two gods, together, represent a powerful symbol of unity, bringing together the different halves of the world, the desert and the fertile, the north and the south, the sky and the earth. Horus and Seth come together in friendliness to anoint their chosen ruler. Naturally, that ruler is Seti. In another scene, we find Seti approaching the temple of Karnak itself. This time, he is being led by the hand by two different gods, Khonsu and Atum. The great deities lead Seti towards Karnak, where he will meet his illustrious father, Amun-Ra, Rahorakti, and all the gods of the great pantheon. Seti wears a long wig with a Uraeus serpent on his forehead. Noticeably, he takes an interesting pose. Many of Seti's images that show him before the gods present Seti as though he is bowing. Normally, a king will stand upright, his back straight, his shoulders broad. But Seti will often bend at the waist, as if he is showing humility and obeisance before the gods. It's an interesting feature, one that is extremely rare in pharaonic imagery. I'll come back to the significance of that when we dive deeper into Seti's temples. But in these scenes, we do find him in this pose of humility and piety. It's an interesting feature. In another scene, we find Seti kneeling before the king of the gods himself. Amun-Ra, seated upon his throne, holds out a hand, raising it over the crown which Seti now wears. Seti kneels on the ground before Amun-Ra, and he wears the blue crown, that sort of helmet-shaped one. Beside Amun-Ra, the great goddess Hathor, or Huther, reaches out her hand to give her blessing to the king. And in front of this group, the great deity Jehuti, or Thoth, holds out a pen to write the names and record the years of Seti's reign. The whole scene conveys a simple but potent message. Seti I is a king chosen and blessed by the gods, and every aspect of his reign, from his image, to his names, to his longevity, is created by their will. This is classic pharaonic art. The king establishes legitimacy in connection with the gods. He is not a mere mortal. He is not wholly divine. He is the man that connects earth and the sky. The one who connects the living and the dead. The great being who connects humanity with the divine. Finally, Seti receives more blessings from the gods. 
In a particularly important scene, we find the king kneeling beneath a tree. Seti, wearing his blue crown, is kneeling beside the Ishad tree. This is the tree of life or tree of eternity. It symbolizes the duration and longevity of a pharaoh's rule. Every leaf should symbolize a year, so that each king could reign as long as there are leaves on the tree. Seti kneels beside the Ishid, and behind him, the great deity Jehuti, or Thoth, reaches out to write Seti's names on each and every leaf. Again, it captures the essential idea. The king will live forever, his rule will be eternal. Scenes like these do not record the exact moment of Seti's coronation, but they convey the idea of it and the overall significance of these rituals. The king would come to the great temples, including the temple of Karnak, and he would present himself before the various deities. The statues of the gods, shining within their houses, would give Seti their blessings. The priests would announce his names and offer praises, guaranteeing a long life and great splendor. Seti himself would probably go through various costume changes, putting on different pieces of regalia to honor different gods and to mark different aspects of his rule. In short, we don't have the literal depiction of his coronation, but we have the next best thing, the way Seti wanted it to be seen by those who came after. <laughs>